Orbital Wars will be the news today. The West is reporting that Russia has launched a Matryoshka satellite, and it's a new word in the satellite fighter category. But first, let's list the most interesting events that took place in our country during the week. So, a solemn flag-raising ceremony took place and a new multipurpose large submarine, Mazaysk, was handed over to the Russian Navy. The submarine is equipped with modern torpedo and missile weapons that have successfully proved their effectiveness in combat conditions. She is enlisted in the littoral flotilla of diverse forces of the Pacific Fleet. Soyuz 2.1 A launch vehicle with Progress MS-25 cargo spacecraft was launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome's Pad 31. For the quail experiment, a special incubator complex of 3 and 48 Japanese quail eggs were sent to the ships. The incubator, which will be housed in the science module, plans to study the embryonic development of the chicks. Half of the eggs will be in weightless conditions, the other half in a centrifuge that mimics Earth's gravity. The SCIF-D satellite has completed flight tests. The maximum data transfer rate through SCIF-D is 6.5 megabits per second. This is the first apparatus of the Federal Sphere project, which aims to eliminate the so-called digital divide. Providing internet access via satellite where it is impossible to lay fiber optics, for example, in high latitudes, taiga, tundra and permafrost zones. In central Antarctica, the final stage of construction of the new wintering complex, Vostok, was started. In the third construction season, it is planned to fully complete the installation of the station modules. To ensure construction and installation works this season a series of sledge caterpillar traverses will be carried out to deliver almost 2,600 tons of cargo to Vostok station. The Abakov plant of the state concern Almaz Anti demonstrated a working sample of the L-type vehicle. It is an L7-class heavy-duty electric ATV being developed by the concern. It has an enclosed interior and full automotive controls. Range on a full charge is claimed at 183 kilometers. Hence the planned purpose of the car, car sharing and delivery services. Rostec State Corporation opened a new plant in Tuva to produce components for emulsion explosives. The products are necessary for drilling and blasting operations and will be supplied to the largest mining companies of the Republic. The products can be used in wells of any water cut. Kangasep machine building plant has started production of Russia's first marine drones. The uncrewed boats are capable of accelerating up to 80 km per hour, carrying explosives weighing up to 600 kg and traveling more than 200 km. The boats will be able to carry not only TNT, but also special cargo or escort and reconnaissance assets. The devices will also be able to work as a platform for an aerial drone or anti-drone. A wholesale and distribution center for freezing, storage and shipment of meat products worth almost 4 billion rubles has opened in the Karachansky district of the Belgorod region. The capacity of the warehouse is 120 pallets per hour or 1,400 tons per day. The products are stored at a temperature of minus 21 degrees at a site of 12,000 square meters. The Ural locomotives plant handed over the first four trains of the new Swallow to the Sverdlovsk Railroad. The five-car Swallow of the C-104 series is designed for railroads electrified by direct current. The key advantage of the electric train is Russian traction equipment capable of providing fast acceleration of the train up to 160 km per hour and efficient braking with energy recovery to the grid. The reconstruction of the Niryangi Air Terminal complex was completed. The project provides for the reconstruction of the runway for the construction of a new air terminal complex with a capacity of 300 passengers per hour. Fuel and Lubricant Depots, Niryangi Airport, aka Chulman, the southernmost air hub of Yakutia, has two runways, a dirt runway for helicopters and a concrete runway, 3.6 kilometers long and 45 meters wide, for airplanes. Now for the orbital wars. The photo shows the launch of the preset launch vehicle Soyuz 2.16, which took place on October 27, 2023, which put into orbit a very interesting satellite, just a month later turned into three spacecraft of different purposes at once. Okay, so space-based California startup Leo Labs didn't start up that long ago, but it's already become one of the top purveyors of news from Earth orbit in an incredible way. This office comes from Silicon Valley and allegedly was the initiative of several young scientists who came up with a number of interesting software products, whose purpose is to prevent the collision of orbital objects with each other and mountains of space debris. It is amazing how quickly and easily these enthusiasts, with a charter fund of less than a million and a half dollars, gained access to data from secret military space surveillance stations directly related to the strategic forces of the United States. Major publications have called them the new space regulators, although they are more appropriately named orbital segridates, and the first people that, by an equally amazing coincidence, 
These California Smarties are trying to tune out our Russian spacecraft. Well, who would have thought it, in one way or another related to our military programs. However, I don't care under what guise the US strategic intelligence legends and legalizes its structures. The information from LEO Labs comes sometimes very interesting and a little revealing about the Russian satellite constellation related to our Ministry of Defense. Its apparatuses, as a rule, pass under the little saying name, Cosmos, with a conventional serial number. Our military press services themselves do not like to talk about it, limiting themselves to the most general and rather boring information. Although there are no special secrets here, and many projects need at least some introduction. If only for the purpose of realizing that in the field of our military space everything is not standing still either, and its development is proceeding at a quite working pace. By the way, here's one of the LEO LAPS ground tracking facilities suddenly placed at the US Strategic Forces Space Tracking Station. And just the other day, these most amazing star troopers from LEO LAPS reported on their social networks about the unusual maneuvers of the Russian satellite Cosmos 2570, launched from the presets at Cosmodrome in the interests of the Russian military in late October 2023. Closer examination of the issue suggests that it is a domestic Lotto C-1 radar reconnaissance spacecraft. This is the fifth satellite of this series, designed and manufactured by a consortium of Russian space companies. In general, Lotto's, together with the same new Pion NKS spacecraft, form the basis of the Liana Global Reconnaissance Network, which works in the interests of maritime strategic intelligence and provides targeting instructions to all the means of the Russian Navy to defeat fleet groups of potential enemies. One of its main purposes is to track American and British carrier groups. But this time Lotto C-1 behaved quite differently from the way freshly launched units of this program usually worked. Three days after the launch, according to the observations of American researchers, something that American observers called Object C suddenly separated from the main vehicle. And after another two weeks of smooth orbital motion, Object C released a third spacecraft, tentatively named Object D. Without much hesitation, Leo Laps called it all the Matryoshka doll effect, hinting at the similarity of the principles of operation of such satellites with the device of the favorite souvenir of all foreign tourists in Russia. The association is, of course, primitive, but it generally reflects an essence understandable to the Western average person. By the way, this is what Lotus C-1 looks like in orbit. It belongs to the category of very heavy satellites weighing more than 6 tons. From all that happened at Leo Laps, read US Strategic Intelligence Services, two main conclusions were drawn. The first is that the vehicles released by the Lotto C-1 satellite are irrelevant to the primary mission of the spacecraft. It acted as a carrier within a carrier for them in this case, and after sending these little ones on their way, it began its normal motion in a given orbit. But Object C and Object D themselves behave like the Pentagon Space Forces have been telling us about their promising developments. We are talking about the so-called sub-satellites, small vehicles whose main purpose is to interfere with the work and, if necessary, to destroy orbital vehicles of a potential enemy. So far in the US, these are only beautiful and potentially very expensive projects for which several companies, including the structures of Elon Musk, are fighting for. And if you believe the trendy startups, Russia has already practically started to realize this idea, surprising with a creative and very budgetary approach to the issue. The report on the official website says quite unambiguously, to quote, Deployment of sub-satellites of unclear purpose is likely a method of deploying co-orbital anti-satellite systems or covert payloads that pose a lethal threat to sensitive or classified satellites in the U.S. constellation. End quote. This is what a picture of LEO LAPS looks like. There is a second conclusion that exactly the same way another spacecraft, Cosmos 2565, launched exactly one year ago, in November 2022, behaved in orbit. At that time it was considered almost a launch failure and separation from the main vehicle of some abnormal fragments. Now it has become finally clear that this is a purposeful activity, and it indicates that soon there may be many such satellites in orbit. With an elegant joystick movement, transforming from two to six military spacecraft at once. So now let them be afraid. We have in our stash also satellites Vanki Vistanki and satellites Volchki and many other terrible and incomprehensible space monsters. And seriously, it is good to see such an asymmetrical, reasonable and pragmatic approach of our developers. However, this has always been a staple of domestic military designs and inventions.